Do you want to know who the culprit is? Here he is. There he is. The culprit. The escape artist. Cunningham Skink. Eastern Australia. Spiny tail. Very cool animal. I'm not going to lie. Very cool animal, but he gives me grief. The other one behaves. He gives me grief. He bites. He attacks. He escapes. Look at him. Can't trust those eyes, can you? No. So I'm spending quite a lot of time um, downsizing my animals over the next uh, six months just because I've got some big plans. But, you know, I'll talk about, I'm going to talk about my micro and macro goal, goals in this one. So I don't, this is actually in the way, but I'll try and stay here so you can kind of hear me clearly. Essentially, I'm downsizing my frogs. So I'm putting all my frogs into one enclosure. They're all tree frogs, so they're fine. Oh, there's a fly. So yeah, I'm downsizing my tree frog. And they're all, they're all whistling tree frogs. They can all live together. But I kind of had like, all the adults separated um because i was trying some new sort of experimental breeding um behavior um setups but now i'm downsizing to make it more efficient so they'll all be together just for the short term and i'll talk about my micro and macro goals as to why i'm doing that but anyway now comes the challenge of these guys are small and this is dense uh, bush and foliage so I'm trying to get them out basically i've gone five out so far and i was thinking you know it's sometimes it's good to wait till oh an isopod um later in the day or later in the evening, shall I say, they're nocturnal, meaning that they will be more active later in the night or later in the day. Yeah, I've given them more feed. I need some, need some mealworms tomorrow. All right, so five. There's ten in here. I need to get another five out. So let's see what we can wrangle. Oh, it's good. I've got a very good... The thing is about this enclosure is that it's done a good job to get to where it is. Now I kind of have to ruin it a little bit by pulling it apart, but... You know what? It's not like it was hard to do. This was a very like makeshift breeding enclosure for them. So if I can do it once, I can do it again. But the other one's actually in better state. Actually, my OG uh, frog room is way is way nicer and way better built. But I do need to free up this enclosure anyway because the plan, part of my macro goals, I'll talk about later. There'll be plans for this. What's that? Is that is there a frog there? I actually would have thought personally, I would have had babies uh sorry like spawn by now but i haven't so that's part of the decision making process as well to kind of downsize them i thought they were going to spawn for me i probably would have kept them in here for a bit longer but they haven't so i'm kind of making some moves now oh man yeah that's stinky a eh? frogs man it's just because whenever there's water involved you're gonna have stinky environments now these guys do hide in the leaves sometimes so you have to be careful so yeah downsizing part of my efficiency uh journey with uh these animals as well so i would love to know what people uh do in regards to efficiency with reptiles and amphibians meaning that you know i have a lot of animals and i'm a very busy guy i have a full-time job this isn't my full-time job so how do people stay i suppose efficient with their animals when they're busy um are people just like full-time reptile keepers that would be my dream that is one of my macro goals be just being able to stay at home full-time and have reptiles and animals and create content and do other things in the future with them to kind of expand on it but in the short term i mean or in the meantime man i've got a job and i've got bills so i have to work all oh, right so yeah this thing's i'm kind of glad i'm doing this actually because their swimming tub although it's here it's kind of spilling to other areas so now what i'm doing is all right go down one this is number six which is good so slowly getting them out and i'll show you him quickly before he jumps away Oh, little cutie patootie, can you see him? There he is. Anyway, six. And they'll do well in the other one. It's got automatic misting, so they're not missing out on, any, on anything. Um, if anything, they're going to they're gonna be in a darker and better environment because this is way more lighting and less, um, like they're, they're more exposed in here, meaning that there's less dense foliage for them. They have to kind of hunker down if they want to be in like darkness during the day, whereas the other one's quite dark. And if they want light, they jump out or they put themselves in the lighting parts of it the other thing as well that i was interested in is they've stopped croaking and part of that means that hang on is that yeah i've done six so part of them stopping to croak i'm thinking well if they've stopped croaking does that mean that they're no longer like in the breeding behavior phase um and i'm like yeah the weather has gotten warmer but we've gone from cold to warm and they were croaking towards the uh, the end of the cold period but these guys also breed all year round in new zealand so they don't necessarily need breeding activity or breeding phases or like cold warm cold warm uh, they breed all year round here meaning that 
um, and they're they're like really adapted to the South Island of New Zealand, which is like a lot, we'll say milder. Okay, that's getting a bit too deep now. All right, I've gotten six. There's four more in here somewhere, and do we just have to wait until a little bit later? We'll see. As I'm like taking uh, all the old stuff out, you can see some of the isopods. They're coming out of the frog tank. So I'm going to save those suckers and put them into one of my colonies because they come in handy. Uh, they breed in here. I'm, I'm quite... Quite good at breeding these guys now. Quite easy. Not too hard to breed. So as I'm taking it out, all right, that's the fun stuff. Let's get into the nitty and gritty. So yeah, like I said, I've got six. I need to find four. Now where to start? I had the lights off for a while, so I was hoping maybe in that time. Where's the lid for these? There it is. I was hoping in that time we would be able to get them out because they're nocturnal and it would be a lot easier to spot them, but doesn't look like any of them the remainder four were out or not that I've seen so I will gently look around lots of leaf litter these guys are good at hiding man I might just have to pull plants out to be honest but I have to be careful as well because these guys are good at hiding they'll like jam themselves in these little cricks and crevices for these leaves some of their hiding spot for it, right, uh, favorite hiding spots have been in these little areas so until I get another four out of here that's not going anywhere that's kind of cool actually it's like an aquatic plant that sticks out not sitting very well right that's that's fucking annoying like just sit thank you all right that makes it easier it's opened up a little bit more oh man this thing stinks like a pond in a good way if you know what i mean this is a good plant i'm gonna save him he's gonna go into the other enclosure actually yep he is a good plant once again how do i salvage or get this guy out cleanly oh i need bags Need some bags, y'all. Luckily, I've got everything I need in here. I think. Nope, that's not even fucking close. Oh, painful. All right. Nope, I don't have the what I need. Where can I put it in the interim? The same with this. I'll kind of put it in here. And I'll go through that afterwards to make sure I haven't left any frogs behind. So, here we go. That's another good plant. Oh, yep, there we go. There's another one. Oh, there's two. Excellent. All right, we're getting there. So that's number seven. Come on. Gentle, gentle. There he is. Little... He's looking good, man. Look at that. All right, let's get him out. All right, kids with frogs. I know I didn't do it earlier, but always wear gloves. There's one more in this corner. If I lift this. Oh, there he is. Okay. That means... Little jumper. Always like frogs, eh? Think you're cute. Cool animals as well. All right, two left. Two to find. And they will be in this all this they'll be in this corner or in this plant so i have to be very careful to not remove this are they hiding in here this is another good plant i'll put in the other enclosure it's doing really well actually doing really well this thing salvage the good plants man so i've got two to find and they will be in here man frogs are really good at hiding and sometimes the ones that are good at hiding and sometimes you know if i don't find them now that's not the end of the world what i'll do is i'll tactfully kind of leave it like i'll take out as much stuff as i can closely inspected and what i'll do is i'll leave it and then over like the next day or two they'll come out on their own accord obviously to eat and then i'll be able to get them and they'll be basically in like open space or open plan environment that one's safe to throw away so let's talk about my macro and micro goals that's why we're here right oh no we'll talk to them about in a sec i just want to focus on Try and find these last two. And you know what, man? Sometimes they're in the cracks up above, man. I have seen that. Less than desirable, but they seem to not be spending as much time in there. And they'll be in like these cracks, man. So I have to be really careful. I'll put this here. Because if they are anywhere, they're going to be like under this moss. Fuck, this stinks, man. Kind of glad I'm cleaning this out because this fucking reeks. It just reeks like, um, you know, if you're like near a pond somewhere. That's what it smells like. Oh, oh, that's a pond. Yeah, so like if you're like um near a pond and, and you're close, you kind of smell it. Two frogs yet to be found. Oh, they could be anywhere, man. Food for thought. So I'll take these plants out and I'll kind of just like plop one here. And then I'll kind of like plop this one here. They could be down there. They could be down here. They could be anywhere, man. Last thing I'll take out is the water. But they're good at hiding. But before we do anything, we need to inspect these plants so i've got another issue y'all 
I've got an escape artist. He's been caught, but that's the issue with uh, having such a unique animal. So I've got, an, I've got a little escape artist. Old Dapple, I've separated him for now, but basically I've had a Cunningham skink. And I'm in an enclosed room, which is good. So they can't escape this room, but he has now gotten the courage to climb up this. And I was kind of like, I saw him during the week at the end of the day, and I kind of walked in, and he was like right at the end of this perch here. And he was kind of like looking up real high, and he was like real perched up quite high. And I was like, oh, he's found like a cool basking spot that he enjoys. It's kind of near the heat lamp. But then I was like, actually, he's been sussing out how to get out of this thing, man. He's like, because all I've got is uh, like lips over the side, which should be enough because they can't physically climb up the sides. They can't do that. And he's tried. Everything's tried. I've seen him try, but they can't. What I think he's done is he's jumped, man. He's been sussing out the distance. They're smarter than they look, man. These animals, these reptiles. So he sussed that out. The female who's a lot smaller than him, she can't or she hasn't or she's not that brazen enough. But basically now I'm like, if he can jump that distance, I need to make a lid for this thing, man. Or at least make the lips um, a lot further out. Because what I can't think he's doing is if he can jump to this and he's doing it comfortably, he's kind of assessing the distance and he knows that this is a lip. And he's kind of confident enough to make that jump, cling on. And he literally got out and he was scurrying around. The only reason I heard him was because I opened up the door and I heard him rustling through the cardboard down the other end of the room. So I've put him aside. I've locked him away. He's kind of under punishment for the night. He's just in the exoterra for the evening. But anyway, that's what I need to do. I need to suss this out tomorrow, this weekend. I need to build out this lip. And there's going to be a lot that needs to be done. So... I'll see uh, Dimple's, that's Dapple. Dimple's gone to sleep. She's a good girl. She knows this is her home. But I get it, man. Like, I get it. They want more space. They're probably curious of what's outside of this box. And they'll get it. They'll get it in the future within, you know, I'll talk about my macro goals, which link to that, which is a future reptile room. And it's going to be, they'll probably be outside as well. These guys are going to be in an amazing outdoor enclosure at some stage. But that's macro. Right now, I'm in the micro I'm in the very short term. So let's talk about micro and macro goals. So when I talk about micro and macro goals, what I'm talking about is it's good to have, it's good to set goals and it's good to be goal oriented in every facet of your life, whether it's professional or personal. So for me, I'm, I'm huge on goals because goals are targets. Targets are things you drive or strive towards and it makes you productive and constructive to getting to those goals and it actually makes you take action because they're goals that you really want to achieve. Some of my macro goals with reptile keeping uh, yeah, I want a future reptile room and I want a purpose built reptile room and it's built for purpose in the sense that it's temperature controlled and it's got heaps of like the racking systems are all uniform in nature. Everything looks great. The lighting setups and mistings all throughout and I can have fish tanks. I can have aquatic systems. I can have everything I want. That's macro. That's like next house, next property. And I'm going to have a place or room or area specifically built for that. That also actually and the reason why that's a good macro goal because it achieves another macro goal, which is me buying my next house or buying my first home, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's that's a good macro goal because they kind of met, meet each other. And especially with, you know, I love creating content. My future of this is I want to keep creating content. I'd love for this to be my full-time job. So those two kind of go together and they kind of go down the same path or journey and they align. Micro goals are very, very short term for me. So a micro goal is something a lot smaller like, I've always wanted to breed crickets. Boom, done that. Like I only do it once or twice. Maybe I'll keep doing it for the sake of having some food and future colonies. But they are a lot of work. Um, so it's always a combination. They always conflict each other, right? So one of my other goals is, or macro goals is to be really efficient with my reptile keeping. So less is more, do less, have more, uh, have more native geckos. My other macro goal is actually getting um, the next level of permit to keep rarer species of new zealand gecko uh, that's because a that's been a dream of mine i want to give back i want to work closer with conservation and be able to breed the rarer species so that there's more insurance populations across the country that's another macro goal the other efficiency element of it is you know i love cutting them skinks blue tongues tortoises because they hibernate during winter in new zealand so you can have them outside or even inside and they'll hibernate for three months which makes it super easy as a reptile keeper but it doesn't so that's great, but then when you have things like fish and newts and even New Zealand geckos that are active most of the time, like most of the year, and leopard geckos, that's what makes it harder. So one of my macro goals is how do I be more efficient? I'd love to hear from people around the world what they do with their reptile keeping. And I'm not, talk I'm not talking about misting systems and timers and things like that. Like I've got timers for my lighting and misting systems, 
it's bigger than that. It's like doing those little, doing like strategic things, like for example, how you keep them or husbandry practices, or, you know, do you do anything different or unique with regards to, um, you know, keeping certain types of animals and still enjoying the hobby. Like I'd love to know what people around the world do. So comment below for sure. I'd love to, I'd love to like consult and I suppose understand and learn from other people. That's like part of it. Right. But right now for me, you know, certain species are key because they hibernate during winter, like I said, and then with other species, I just try and keep things really, really efficient as I can with how I keep them and what I feed them, et cetera, et cetera. My, another micro goal for me is like uh, breeding my tree frogs. I just want to, I just want to breed my tree frogs once I'm downsizing them now, but they are whistling tree frogs. They breed all year round in New Zealand, whether it's warm or cold. So they should breed. I haven't bred them yet, but I'm working towards that. So it's downsizing them. It's for now, just because I'm planning to move in the next six to 12 months. So I'm kind of getting preparing for that, but Hey, they might breed in a different enclosure when they're all together. I had them split up initially, like I said previously, but anyway, another, that's another micro goal. Another micro goal might be for you, you know, breeding leopard geckos once. I just like, I, I just want to prove I can do it to myself, right? It's like an element of fulfillment and it's an achievement, I suppose. And I love, I love the animals and watching the full life cycle end to end is also really, really rewarding for me. And I get it all on camera for you guys. So you guys can see, oh, that's how you literally raise tadpoles, yeah, tadpoles from spawn to froglets to frogs. I love that whole life cycle. I think it's super cool and seeing little froglets is super cute. New to easy. I've done videos on that. Uh, attached the link above for me raising a newt from an egg to a EFT. So I love doing other stuff. Anyway, that's the plan for the weekend. A lot to do. A lot to do this weekend. I have to downsize the newt. I have to clean the newt out. I have to move his tank, which you'll see. I have to do something for this lid security wise, so I can get Dapple back in here because he's grumpy that he's in the exoterra for the night. Well, it's punishment, right? Behave yourself, man. For those that need to hear this, crickets are grubby, man. Like actual grubs so dirty i think you know lesson learned like do you want crickets long term yes it's food but having to actually like manage them and oh my goodness you don't even know eh? oh god all right so easiest way to do this is always have a spare tub always have a spare tub ready to go and you kind of just rotate them around i almost need another like two tubs and i'll probably get there because i'm going to do some racking downsize some peeps these two here are actually empty behind me so I don't know what to do with them. But anyway, holy mackerel, that is a big cricket. They're getting bigger, man, and that's why I kind of need to start splitting them up. Because some are big, and then some are small. And I don't even know how I'm going to do this, to be honest. I don't know who's left to, like, hatch. I have to do this, like, strategically. So you guys, I'll just transfer over quickly. Need some water. I don't actually know if there's much in here, but I'll still, like, if there's any, like, remaining eggs. But I'll leave them there just in case. Fucking hell. Grubby, eh? Grubby little fuckers, man. They're a lot of work. Don't underestimate breeding insects. This one as well. No idea like if there's anything left, but I'll spray it anyway. I'm going to do like double-sided. The water dish. God, I do not know how I'm going to transfer all the babies over. But right, we're going to do our best. Fresh water. So these guys are voracious eaters, right? You need to constantly have food for them. I've got a little carrot nub. There it is. A little fresh carrot nub. And I give them dog biscuits because, like, I've heard and I was told dog biscuits is the best source of protein for them. Look at this guy. He's huge, man. Holy. Yeah. He almost needs to go in his own bloody enclosure. He's probably one of, like, the firstborns. I just don't know how to get them out now. Like, you know what I mean? Away from... I don't know how to get them out of this old bin when they're so small and transfer them to, into this new bin. Like, how do people do it? There's so many of them. They're, like, a little... Yeah. You don't want to lose any either. You know what I mean? This is going to take forever, doing it one by one. Jesus Christ. All right, anyway, so that's what you have to do. Transfer them, clean, because they're so grubby. Oh, could get a big one with this little pile. Is that all of them? I have no idea. Oh, another big boy. Probably get him pretty easily. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's it. So, first, first phase, breaking these down. Yeah, look at all the eggs, man. See, once you move some soil around, here's all your crooked eggs. Look at them. Hundreds. Hopefully hundreds. So you know what I'm giving these guys? I'm giving them some stuff out of the garden. Uh, basically, they're going to get some, just some flowerings, some vegetation. I'm going to try one more time with these salted fly larvae just to see if they're going to eat them, man. I need to get rid of them somehow. Can't give them to the frogs forever because they like some of them are too big for the frogs. So it has to be definitely a combo of these. Yeah, man, 
Could be the smell, eh? Anyway, I gotta get these big, larger, darker ones. The thing is, they should still eat them. Like, they're still moving around. They're still definitely edible for them. I don't know why, man. They've just reje started rejecting them anyway. So I'll leave you with this. Sav having a soak. She loves it. Look at her. Hey, boy. Little swimmer, little springtime, little hot day swim.